Now let's take a look at moving the NX or the uh, tracker. So what we want to do is now that we've studied kind of the theory of DC motors and some of the terminology, we want to look at how we can create a program to perform locomotion uh, using the Mindstorms. So one of the first places to start is to give yourself a task of where we're going to move the robot. So for example, you could just say, well, I'm going to throw down some random blocks and see if it moves. But it's a little bit uh, funner to actually give yourself something to do. So one of the things you can do is map out a couple of these very simple courses. So for example, this one right here, maybe you put uh, maybe you put some masking tape down on the ground and you put a circle and you're going to say, I'm going to put the, the tracker right here and I'm going to move it forward and try to land it in this square. Now what we're doing with locomotion at the, in this video is we're not going to look at any sensors or anything like that. We're basically just going to do this as a sequence of tasks where we're just going to basically guess and check. So we could you know do a certain number of rotations uh, on the on the tracks and then see how far it goes and then see try it you know and then if it went halfway then double it and go uh, or we could do it for a certain number of seconds. But it's kind of interesting just getting started this way because you start to see the impact of things like uh, coasting and the momentum of the robot and the surface that you're on. So if you're on carpet versus a linoleum floor, uh, it it moves a lot faster and, or slower, you know, slower on carpet. And you can also start to see the impact of having the batteries wear down over time. So maybe you have a program that works perfectly uh, at the beginning of the day. And then after four hours, you notice that the, the robot just isn't quite making it to the destination. And it's because the batteries are going down and the servo motors aren't getting enough juice. So we're going to just basically do this. Uh, we're going to start with a simple, straightforward task. And then we're going to Let's do a turn. So we'll look at a couple different turning options that you have in the uh, Mindstorm software. So we'll put a little obstacle out there, and we'll try to turn a left hand. Then we'll do a couple obstacles, and then we'll we'll end with a uh, with a square. And what's neat about this one is that you could do this with a sequence of tasks. So just forward, turn left, and then forward, turn left, forward, turn left, forward. But we can also do it with a loop. So we'll end by looking at how we can do a looping structure in the uh, programming interface and use that to accomplish a uh, repetitive task. Okay, so at this point, let's bring up our EV3 Mindstorms software. And this is the welcome screen that you're going to see. So just to kind of recap where we're at, uh, down here are a bunch of tutorials that show you how to run the software so you're getting started you know that's like plugging it in and everything which we've done software overview it gives you just kind of a, a walkthrough of where the blocks are where the graphical blocks are and I'll do that a little bit as we go on the locomotion and then content and then it's got some users guides and in here you might see some construction plans etc uh, so there's some resources down here okay then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to this plus and this is going to say add project and this this graphical interface really relies on this hover over so you're going to you know hover over things and see what they are a lot so go ahead and click on add project and it takes a minute and it's gonna bring up your it's gonna bring up this blank kind of palette for you and the way that this works is each of the items each of the programming constructs that you're gonna use are a graphical block okay so this is gonna represent your start state and you're going to basically move left to right and you're going to drag these graphical blocks into here and you're going to connect them according to what you want to accomplish. So down here you're going to see these different uh, these different tabs that are different colors and they're not labeled so you have to actually mouse over them to see what they are. So if I, if I mouse over this green one you see that's an action and what you're going to see down here is you're going to have control of the medium motor. Okay so that's the the one the the one that's not used for locomotion on the EV3 it's used for kind of the kind of arms and spinners and stuff like that and then you're gonna have a large motor that's what they call the two servo motors this block right here controls one motor at a time if you configure your robot into a uh, tank configuration or just having two wheels then these two blocks are what you can use to accomplish a, a move forward backward or turn this one right here is a steering one so you can actually just tell it I want to turn to the left and it kind of moves forward and turns to the left like you would in a car. Uh, this right here, move tank, uh, this is the one we're going to be using primarily uh, to move straight. And if I click on it and drag it up, what you'll see is I'll pop this down and we'll kind of look at some of the options we have. This one right here allows you to control the power of the left and the right 
wheel or servo and remember that they're actually connected to the tracks of the EV3. Now if you want to change the ports what you do is you mouse over the actual letter so like I just clicked on C and it tells me I could actually change the the port number this is correct for us so if we look at this so here's my tracker if I look at this I've got my uh, my left on B and my right on C and so this is how I wanted this is how I have it set up so when I think about going forward it's gonna move B forward and C forward if I wanted to turn for example turn right I could actually adjust my power down a little bit on my right motor by clicking on this uh, little drop down and adjusting it and that would turn right so when you start turning on here is where you really uh, really need to make sure that your motors are connected up correctly but if I want to change B you click right on it okay okay and so let's go through the options here if I come over to here I've got the move tank and that's telling me you know what this block is if I come over to this little thing this is how you set what it's going to do in terms of how long it's going to do so you could say off and you might think why would I want to have a move block that's an off well that's if you wanted to stop so if I want to move forward and then stop and wait there for something to happen uh, then you could just say on forever so this would be like unlimited rotations and we'll see how we use that uh, then you have you can turn it on for seconds on for degrees which is going to be the number of degrees that you turn on the servo and then you could do for on for full rotations so you could actually say rotate the servo uh, one 360 degree rotation okay so then over here depending on what you choose so let's go ahead and just do it for seconds when I change the the uh, type of control we're going to use for the block then that changes this column right here and so I can tell it how long I want to go so let's just go for two seconds and then over here you're gonna have what it's gonna do at the end so you can either have it come to a hard stop so go for two seconds and then slam the brakes on or you can have it coast okay so I'm gonna put it on coast just to make it a little bit smoother and at this point I have my first block in here that would make the tracker move before I download that what well, let's set up a let's just look at a few more things with the 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 blocks available these are actions you can do so there's also an action for changing the display you could play a sound you could uh, change the lighting on the brick and then you'll see these ones when we get into different types of programming so you have flow control so you're gonna have your loop and your switch statement here and then you're gonna have over here you're gonna have uh, sensors so this is where we're gonna be able to control all the different sensors so the infrared or the color sensor uh, or even uh, the touch sensor or timers and so these are these are other blocks for you and then there's more complicated ones like data operations and advanced and, and then there's you can make custom ones here data operations are where you're collecting information you might collect it from a sensor and use that for intelligent decisions but the point of what we're doing right now is just to move so what I'm gonna do is I am going to take this program and I'm, I just powered on my my tracker or my EV3 and what I want to do at this point is let's get some naming um, let's get some names set up here so the project itself can have multiple programs so I can actually create another program by clicking right here on this X and it'll create another program and it's kinda neat because you could have a project uh, just for locomotion okay and when you download it's gonna download all the programs so you can you can actually have it on the EV3 where you can hear that just turned on it takes about a minute to turn on but you can download the whole project then you can run through these different uh, these different programs so first thing I'm gonna do is let me let me change the name of the of the first program and let's just call it uh, task one and then I'll, I'll delete my second program by clicking on that X and then what I want to do is I want to save this somewhere so I'm gonna go ahead and say file save project and it's gonna ask me where to save these ones so I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, let's call it loco one project actually let's just call it local one PRJ okay so it's short and that stands for locomotion so I save that off and then when I download it I'll actually get a folder on the uh, brick that I can run through and I'll see this task one program so at this point I am powered on I have my my uh, USB cable connected I can see that it's connected over here because my status indicator came up and then what I can do is I can either download or I can download and run now again I want to caution you that if you download and run I I'm gonna pick this up so that it doesn't take off on me but I'll download, download and run 
So it ran for two seconds. The danger in that is that it's got a cable connected to it. <laughs> so a lot of times you'll hit go and there's a run and just yank this cable and it'll pull your computer off the table or something like that. So I've already downloaded it and ran. Uh, so it is downloaded, but I'm going to go ahead and just download it just to show you how to do it. And you can hear that noise when it goes in there. So let's go ahead and see how we do this. So on here now, I'm going to see these different programs, and what I can do is I can browse to the second tab over, which is the uh, files tab, and then I'm going to ha I can I use the center button to select. I use the left and rights to go left and right, and then I use the up and downs to go up and down through the menus associated with the tab. So I'm going to go ahead and I see my local project folder. I click, I select it, and underneath it I see task one. So I select that, and it will run. And now it's always selected, so that's really nice because then I can run it over and over. So I've set up a little course here, and what I have is I have a piece of paper that I taped on the ground, and I'll have my obstacle as my coffee cup in a minute, but I'm going to see if I can start right here. I'll start it on line on my desk, and I'll see if I get there. So I go ahead and say go. And I made it about a little bit less than half, okay? So then you say, well, okay, what do I do now? Well, you you try it <laughs> and tweak your program. So if I want to increase that, what I want to do now is I want to come in, I want to come in here and I want to increase the amount of time. So let's go ahead and let's change it to like five seconds, okay? So now I'm going to download that and it's ready to go and I'll unplug it and let's see if it runs and does it good this time. Okay, I got to browse over to my, I'm going to browse over to my file, loco, and then I got task one, and here I go. So I'm gonna go, go. Three. Almost perfect. <laughs> okay, close enough. Okay, so we did a we did our first task. So this was fantastic. Okay, so now I'm sitting here, and I want to go ahead and do my next program. First of all, what are we trying to do? Let's go up, turn left, and then end. Okay, so I'm going to go up around an obstacle and I want to look at a couple different turns here. So I'm going to come in here, why don't I take my course and I'll put it over here now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an obstacle out there. And I'll have the obstacle be this coffee cup. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go forward, left, and turn. Now. I've already got my forward set up, and I know that basically from the way it was kind of left set up, I should probably go forward about uh, four seconds. Okay, so now I want to turn left. So I can do it two different ways. So the first way I can do it is I can actually copy and paste this this move tank and I, or just drag in a new one and I can do what's kind of what's called a skid steer which is where I just take the wheels and I take my right one and go forward and my left one and go backwards so if I took this and I'm gonna type in negative 75 then this would just spin in a circle okay now I don't I don't really know how much it's gonna spin because I need to test it but this is an example of how you could just stop and spin on a dime, okay? And then let's go ahead and put in a, let's put in another move. And so instead of dragging them from the bottom, I'm just copying and pasting. So I'm just grabbing them and copying and pasting. Uh, so then I'm going to move forward and let's just say I move forward two. Okay. All right. So this is a program. I'm really, I really don't know how far I'm going to go forward. I think that's about right for this obstacle to get around this obstacle. I think turning for... Let's see, let's, let's turn for two seconds, so skids here for two, and then let's move forward for two. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do this, so let me download it. All right, let me save everything here. So I save project, and I go ahead and download, and it's ready to go. So now I'm going to go back to my folder in task one, and I should have made this task two, but that's all right. So here it goes, it's going forward. Stop, skid steers. Holy moly, went way too much and then it went forward. Okay, so we need to dial that down considerably. So I'm almost gonna say, let's dial down the the turn time to 0 0.5, okay? And then we'll go forward. All right, so let's try that. So we'll go file, save project. And now I'm gonna do this again. Okay, so let's go ahead and download. All right, so there it went, and here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we're on task one, and we'll go ahead and go. So it's going forward. 
Here comes our skid steer. Not quite enough, but it did it did go forward about enough. So I think I got it here. I'm gonna do one more time here. So let me change this to one. And then I think I think we got it there. It seemed to need to go a little bit further to actually get to the piece of paper, but I think we got it now. So let's go ahead and save this. And we'll continue here. Okay, so a lot of this, you know, just trial and error, which is fine. I mean, it gets you, it moves you through the iteration of doing all this stuff. We've made our changes, so I'm going to go ahead and download. And I'm ready to go here. So I browse to my task and I say, go. There it goes. Here comes the skid steer. Almost perfect. And it stopped right on it. Okay, great. Now here's what's interesting about that is I accomplished the task, but I also learned something that my skid steer turned just a tiny bit too much. So I could come in here and say, you know, it really needed to be just a tiny bit left. So let me just say 0 0.8. Other than that, everything's perfect. So now if I went ahead and said, I want to do a, a, an obstacle where I have, I want to go up, turn left, go over, and then turn right, and then come up to this. What I could do is, let's say I have another obstacle here, and let's say it's right here. Knowing that my last program, really what I could do is I could come along and say, I'm gonna control C this, and then I'm gonna bring it over here. Let's see here, so I'm gonna bring it right over here. Let me try to zoom out here. So I want to zoom out. What I'm gonna do is hold down control, and then I'm going to scroll out with my scroll bar. So and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to now do the exact same turn. But what I want to do is I want to make this the ex exact opposite. So I'm going to make this negative 75 and then I'll make this 75. And then I know that this worked pretty well in terms of how far forward to go. So I'm going to control C and control V or copy and paste. And I can drag that over to the end and then we're good to go. Okay, so a little bit of uh, m you know, navigating through this GUI. So up here is this pan tool. If you click on that, you can pan around, okay? And then if you want plus and minus in terms of zoom, if you don't want to use the scroll button on your mouse, you can do it that way. Then you also have this one-to-one, -one, which is going to make them the normal size that they're in, or you zoom out. So you can always start with one-to-one, -one, and then you can kind of zoom out to see what you want to do. So this right here, I should be able to download this. So let's go ahead and save it. And then let's go ahead and download it. And let's see what happens. Let's see how this works. So I go ahead and browse over to the local project and my task one, and I'm off and running. Okay, so there it goes. See if my skid steer was adjusted correctly. Perfect. Close enough. <laughs> okay, so you can see how you get stuff, certain things moving. Uh, and then you kind of build on them. So another way we could have done a turn though is if I come down here and do this move steering, one of the things I could have done is I could have drugged that up and I let's take a look at how that is. So I click on it once. Actually, I got, I got to be in this uh, select tool here. So I click on it once and I bring that up. And if I zoom in on it, the way it works is you make sure the motors are selected. And then what you do is you can tell it which way you're going to be turning by doing the slider so you can tell it to go you know you can have it turn a certain number of degrees but it's a little different than the skid steer in terms of you can have it move forward so it's more like a car okay so it's more like you're moving forward and then you're turning to the left as you move forward or turning to the right as you move forward as a, so you can get a little bit gentler motion uh, so you don't actually just stop and then spin on a dime so that's the, the other common way to do steering okay so at this point I want to now accomplish this final task whereas I want to go in a square all right, so I've got some good turns on here, but I don't wanna do this with a sequence. What I'd rather do is I'd rather actually do this in a loop. So let's go in here and let's think about what I wanna do. I wanna go forward and then I wanna turn left and then I really just want to do that four times and that will allow me to accomplish a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and see what I have. I have moved forward for a certain amount of time and I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit, I'm going to go forward for three seconds just because my desk's a little bit small and I actually I probably could do two seconds just to make it 
let's go 2.5 just so it doesn't run off the table but it's big enough to be a square then I turned left okay so that worked great and now that's it I want to delete everything else and I want to then loop this so how do you loop well loop is another graphical uh, <clears throat> another graphical block down here but it's under the flow control so if you click on the flow control tab you'll come in here and you'll see a loop construct and what you do is you bring it over to here and you drop it on the start and then what you want to do is I want to drag these uh, movement blocks into the loop so I go ahead and click on my select tool or my select option and I'm gonna grab these and I'm actually just gonna drag these right into the loop so now I need to figure out how many times am I gonna loop and so you'll n notice over here you have the infinity what you want to do is you want to click on that and you want to do it a certain number of times so I hit count and I want to do it four times okay so at this point I'm good to go and I should be able to go around my obstacle okay and I'll use a coffee cup and let's see if we can download this so I'll go ahead and connect my cable and download and let's see how this works so I browse over to my local project or my local project and I have task one and here we go and I'll kind of move my coffee cup because it's hit <laughs> okay so there it goes <laughs> okay, so that kind of worked. Uh, it worked in terms of what I was trying to accomplish programming wise, but it didn't work because I had it close to the edge of the table. So let's try it again. I almost fell off the desk. Much better. Okay, so there you have it. So there we go. And now I can even have my obstacle in there now that I am brave enough to have a cup of coffee on there and it's moving around the obstacle and we did it with a loop so we've actually covered two of the programming constructs so we've done a sequence of tasks and we've also done a loop in this situation it was a uh, it was a conditional loop because we told it don't loop forever we only wanted to loop it for four times but we were able to get a looping structure in there so now we're building up some complexity in terms of how what we can do with this tracker robot and the next step is we are going to now that we've concluded with locomotion we can start looking at the sensors and the sensors are going to give us the ability to make decisions about something that's happening in the environment. And that will allow us to not only introduce the next programming construct, which is going to be the uh, decision, but it will also allow us to start creating a little bit more complicated uh, programming task, which ultimately lead us to autonomy, which is where the robot can complete a task all by itself. Okay, so that's, that's the wrap.